I'm 32 years old. I've been studying this since I was 18. You know, it, 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 the one thing that makes complete sense is we never signed the contract. We're not part of the posterity. Yeah. You understand? And we're, we're trying to find an avenue. We, we, we want to get, we just want to be left alone. I mean, we, we were just down, I think you're from North Carolina, right? Mm-hmm. Originally, we were just down there in Greensboro speaking with, with a guy there. Supposedly, he he has um, there's some type of expatriation, repatriation uh, documents that could get done. Uh, I met with somebody up here in Philadelphia through him after going driving down six hours to 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 North Carolina. I, I met with this guy. I got a friend that's a cop. I had him run his stuff. It it did come up. Do not detain. Um. But also, really? it did come up. He was on the federal uh, terrorist watch list. <laughs> <laughs> we're, against, we're, against, we're against the ropes right now. What what we want to do? If we want to continue <laughs> with the process, my my, my god brothers, he he's real big on the SEDM. I don't know if you heard about. Uh, the, the oh yeah, I know what people. I know what they are. Yeah. I mean, at the top level, are they? Probably uh, exercising with 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 no. your no. talking about no. no no they all think they have some stake in the U.S. Constitution and that this is their country. As I used to ask them when I was in these groups and seminars, like when did you get you one of them countries? <laughs> you ain't got no country, you know. You were you you were signed in as human resources, and all the nations of the UN. If you're na- if the, if the U.S. is it, it, it doesn't matter if you're if the nation states are member of the U.N. and all the citizens are members of the U.N. and all the members have pledged 25 percent of their natural and human resources to the building of the world government, and everybody thinks there's going to be like some big massive world government or whatever. But if you understand, the U.N. is really it, it is exactly what it, it is. It's a country club. That's what it is. It's a country club. Uh, it's a club full of countries. Lately, that's the way I've been looking at them. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're literally know, trees yeah, they are, above any constitution of any country, or any state. Yeah. You know, you know, the treaty contracts got to be honored. I, I get that concept. That's not hard to. That's not hard to get for me. Like you well, were saying, the thing about the, the, thing about the UN, this Gabby, the thing important. about the UN, real quick. The thing about the UN is, is that. The administrators at the UN, including the Secretary General, they have no power. They're just administrators. It is the nations that come together, as particularly the Security Council. That's where the power is. They make all decisions. Now, anyway, you were saying how how is it? Because it looks like it, like you said, it's a country club. I mean, it's your direction to be a member of this country club. I mean, do they have to honor? Um, you know what what you're doing i mean because the u.n is another united states it seems like like another big bully um well the but but the u.s is the bully the u.s is the bully in the u.n the u.n does nothing they sit in dc they sit in new york in a building the the usa is the top dog in the security council they are in charge of maintaining peace globally and they do it indiscriminately and judiciously you know, and now you can see China and Russia starting to take a much, take a much bigger role in maintaining peace. But um, the right of self determination is in the charter. It's in Article One, Section Two, and it's in Article Fifty Five. So yeah, they it's already there. It's all over uh, all kinds of documents. The the Manila Declaration on Peaceful Settlement of International Disputes is in there four times. So it is the peaceful settlement. But basically, you know, like one of my mentors used to say. Well, because all these people like you're talking about, um, SEDM and all that, it's like, when did they ever sit down at the international table to bargain for any rights? And the answer is they haven't. And they, their assumption is that those guys that I was just talking about, those founders, that they did something for the public at large. And the answer, they, they did not. They did it for themselves and their posterity. They didn't do it. Most of their, they owned slaves. They had indentured servants. And most of those indentured servants were Brits. So they were British that owned other Brits. 
just like today they own Americans. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. Nothing's changed in my mind. It's just there's there's nothing that's changed in a lot of years. So um, <clears throat> the 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 biggest reason I know that they honor all this is because of what we did in the courts. They they have they the judges extended us a lot of leeway, a lot of grace, and you know, they have us all profiled. And one of the things that they knew about me was I wanted out. I was not trying to change the U S I'm like, that's just too big to change. Who's, who's going to change the U S. Um, yeah, I don't think that's, that makes any sense. Uh, they got their thing going on. And who the hell are, are we or anybody else to try to change? It? I mean, they got their, their, their flock of sheep and they're happily grazing in the fields. I, we, me and my my god brother, I say my god brother. He's my best friend. I'm, I'm his son's godfather. He's my son. Uh, we just want to be left the hell alone. You know, we don't want to leave. We don't want to leave. I don't want to leave here. You know what I mean? I just, mm -hmm. I just want to be left left the hell alone. Yeah. You know, and then you know you go down all these rabbit holes. And you what's know, the name of the what's the name of the guy in Greensboro? Oh. Um, it's not coming to my head right now. What the hell was his name? There's this guy that works at the police district. He's cousins with one of my clients, the Haitian. Haitian guy, he's a police officer. I had him run. I asked the guy from Greensboro, I said, look, is it all right if I run your, your info? He gave me his passport card. You know, you know, the whole thing is with the passport and getting it done a certain way, blah, blah, blah. His, nothing came up for him. And but then I, he put me in contact with a with a guy up here that he had did his paperwork for, and one the the, the friend of mine ran his info. Um, it did come up, you know. Do not detain. Uh, I got the I got a screenshot of it, a picture he took of the computer from his cop car, but it does say he's on the on the watch list. Now this guy, from my understanding, he's had like you know he got into a, a car accident. He's a, he was locked up in federal prison. He carries a gun on his hip, open carries with no permit or anything. Um, and the, the cops don't bother him. He told me that the, he's had a few state troopers uh, pull up behind him. He has his, he has Pennsylvania plates, but he has a trust. He has the car registered uh, under a trust name. Um, he says they, they've pulled up behind him, him going about a hundred miles per hour. He says, Gab, they pull up behind me. And he's like, I'm always, I'm always looking, you know, to, to, to test these people to a certain degree. And he says, they pull up behind them, the lights on, they run his tags supposedly. And then they just back up off of him. You, you know what I mean? And like I said, when they ran his, he, he, yeah, he gave me his passport card and he gave me an uh, international driver's permit. Um, mm -hmm. And they ran it and, and it came up, do not detain, you know. Um, I, I'll be happy to send it over to you guys just so you guys could take a look at it. But that terrorist watch list kind of freaks me out. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, think they're waiting. I think they're waiting for him to make a real screw up, and then they'll just take him down. That's my opinion. I mean, he's no different. He ain't no different than any of the other ones I've seen for twenty one years. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen them. I've seen them all. There's a, there's a guy right now in Canada. He called me two weeks ago. He hung out with a guy named um, oh, Al Barcroft. Barcroft actually won one hundred and sixty three cases, and they were all claiming that they were posterity of the United States, but he never could win his land claims. And, um, and you know, they never could like figure it out. And finally, one of the federal judges said, told him in one of the cases, he said, they're not going to let you do this anymore. I'm like, well, if you were right, then what do you mean? They won't, are not going to let me do this anymore. And, you know, after that, he, took his boat or yacht or whatever, went down and got a citizenship in Guatemala. I don't know. They all think that he got taken out. And if you're on that terrorist watch list right now, they don't have to arrest you. They'll just take you out. 
Yeah, I mean that that that's what worries me because didn't Obama sign some type of law when he was a president about terrorists and being able mm, to yeah. snatch you off the street and take you to one time to obey without without any you know type of due process? Yep, so this is the the NDAA National Defense Authorization Act. They can strip your citizenship, make you stateless, and then put you in a seat. Uh, 130, about 35,000 feet over the Atlantic Ocean and open up the doors. <laughs> Adios. Which is what, what, what's worrying us, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about moving forward with, with this process. I mean. I, I don't understand these people that want to try to stick it in their face. That, that one I don't get. I mean, I, what's the point? Were you a child? You're going to drive down the road 100 miles an hour while everybody else is doing 35? I mean, what? You, you, what? You're just like a child? I, yeah, I don't understand that mentality. No, I understand. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, talking about, I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying this guy. I mean, I don't know who this guy is, but, you know, he's, he's well, never mind. <laughs> and I, I just, that's not a good luck to him. I hope he doesn't die. Uh, I, I would, if I'm on the terrorist watch list, I'm going to be doing everything I can to get off of it. I can tell you that. Yeah. I mean, that that's, like I said, that's why, you know, I got a son and, and, you know, he's pretty much the reason why I get up every day and I'm trying to do everything I can not to get uh, snatched away from him. You know what I mean? And, but mm -hmm. you know, we, is we've all had the sense of shit ain't right. You know, I've had that sense since I was 17, 18 years old. You know, I, I started mostly like almost everybody else must have started out with the redemption manuals. It's know? brutal because they're so well practiced in those courtrooms. I mean, I, I, I don't, you know, I had the federal judges training manuals and I just know that they, they let two or 3% of the people win just to keep the show going on. The, 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 there's some hope down here that you can actually win. I was like the casino. Um, yeah, and, and um, like, I mean, I was showing somebody, talking with somebody earlier today, um, and I pulled up Pacer.gov. There was a guy that was going to come on board way back in 2015, and then after eight months, he got raided because he was a Canadian that was down here, had been down here since he was 14. He was older than me um, by at least 10 years. I can't remember. It might have been more. Um, but, I have, but he ended up having everything listed in his common law girlfriend's name or whatever, LLCs, and he was going, he had, he had gotten a social security number, never, never did anything other. I mean, he couldn't, he didn't have a Canadian passport, didn't, couldn't get a U.S. passport, but he got a California driver's license. He was going into DOD meetings with this one driver's license. And I'm like, you know, and he got arrested and uh, held for contempt for not paying back $150,000 in some kind of business that he had been in that was like ruled to be a Ponzi scheme and the winners had to give back the money and yada, yada, yada. And um, so you know, I mean, he could have just declared bankruptcy, I guess, but the bottom line of it is he had a lot of money. He had multiple, he was a multi, multi-millionaire. I have no idea how much money he made out of DOD, uh, as a contractor with his company. Um, or he even, even how he did it. I mean, how he got the company up and running, but he ran everything through LLCs and trust doing the whole Patriot gamut, running things through whatever. And, um, uh, actually at one point in time told me that his trust writer was a better contract writer than anybody in the Dom. And I'm like, great. Then let's watch what happens here. But he never came on board. Um, even though he paid me to go out there and he finally actually, after four days, he said, well, I finally realized that the right of self-determination is the only right we have. I'm like, well, until, until you secure that, you got no rights, none. If it's the only right you got,